Introverted, Intuitive, Feeling, Judging, also known as INFJ, one of 16 personality types according to the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. INFJs are commonly called advocates, and one of the first advantages of being an INFJ is that it's the rarest type among all 16, as they represent only about 2% of the population. They have a deep and thoughtful approach to life, and they rely only on their inner vision and personal values to find their way through it. People like Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, J.K. Rowling, and Marilyn Manson are all INFJs. Welcome to Viral Brain, where we explore the psychology of different personality types. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you can be notified whenever we release new content. Here are 11 tips for dating an INFJ and things you need to know about them if you're dating one. Number 1. INFJs can be awkward on dates, and they can sometimes jump to huge asks or commitments way too early. They're just not that interested in small conversation, they want deep connections. Advocates take the process of finding a life partner very seriously. They look for depth and meaning in their relationships, refusing to settle for anything less than true love. This can mean they can spend a long time single looking for the right one, but it also means they'll end up with someone who's perfectly compatible with their idealistic views of love and relationships. They long for deep connections and romantic feelings more than physical pleasure. And when they finally find the right one, they'll probably have a happy ever after with them. INFJs are probably not interested in casual dates or one-night stands. Number 2. Advocates can sometimes start a fight over what seems to be nothing. Why? Sensitivity to criticism. They can be extremely prone to it. They're the most idealistic personality type. They do everything on principle and care about doing the right thing more than their own personal gains. So if you challenge their principles or personal values, they won't take it lightly. They can become exceedingly defensive in the face of criticism, especially when it's an insult to their core beliefs. So what seems to most people as an innocent joke or a clear-intentioned statement can start a full-blown lecture and argument on morals and principles by an advocate. This can make dating an advocate seem a bit like treading on thin ice, and many people would avoid them because they think they're too hot-headed. And although this leaves advocates with fewer options when it comes to dating, it makes sure that the relationships they build are with trustworthy and like-minded people, and more likely to last, have meaning, and be fulfilling. Number 3. Be your own person. An INFJ doesn't want to be in a relationship with an extension of themselves. They want to see your uniqueness and appreciate your individuality. They want to be with a person who's successful and who occupies a similar status to their own in society. This is because advocates aren't competitive. They don't need to prove themselves better than anyone. They're silently confident. So they don't feel threatened by their partner's success. On the opposite, they encourage it. They want to have a fruitful relationship in which both sides grow as people. They value their time and resources above anything, and being in a relationship means putting in a big portion of this time and resources. So they want to get something out of the relationship. They want a different perspective on life, an independent opinion they can ask for advice when they need it. They don't want the relationship revolving about one side. They want a shared experience. So no, I'll go wherever you want to go, and no, I'll have whatever you're having. Number 4. Never lie. INFJs are hard to convince, and when you're hard to convince, you easily spot all the lies. Advocates know for a fact that the vast majority of people around them lie all the time. Whether they're colleagues about why they were late, their parents about pretty much everything, and even the TV and the internet being mostly inaccurate or misleading. And advocates? They hate lying. They're brutally honest. Even if it hurts someone, they don't care. They tell it as it is. So at first, they will probably suspect you of lying about this or that. 
and you need to constantly prove to them again and again that you are a ridiculously honest person. And give them time. Don't expect them to believe it after three or four times. This is a crucial rule, because if you get caught one time, it'll probably take more than a lifetime to regain an INFJ's trust. Number 5. INFJs can like weird things like a double espresso latte frappuccino, hazelnut flavor, no cream, half skimmed, milk, two sugars. Or they can listen to music from the past century. People might think it's odd, but this results from the fact that advocates have strongly defined preferences. They don't like something or someone just because everyone likes it. They look within themselves to find what they truly enjoy in life, and they're not afraid to embrace it. So they have different tastes in music, food, art, places, and pretty much everything. They probably like some underground bands or a not-so-mainstream genre of art. Don't mistake the INFJ's unique preferences as being too cool for school, because it's frustrating trying to prove otherwise. If you judge them for it, they will avoid discussing their goals and preferences with you. Number 6. Always smell and look nice. Advocates can be particularly aware of those things. The reason for this is that some INFJs develop a personality function called extroverted sensing, which means they become hyper-aware of the information relayed from their senses. Note that this is not a biological superpower. They don't see, hear, or smell better than anyone. They're just really conscious of everything they're seeing, hearing, and smelling, which means they'd feel the cold breeze on their skin, enjoy the sound of music, or marvel at the deliciousness of food more than anyone could understand. However, this can also mean that INFJs would suffer from pain more than other people would, or they're prone to having pet peeves like chewing noises or bright lights, and they're likely to notice if you haven't showered in three days. Number 7. An important thing to know about INFJs if you're dating one is that they can sometimes interfere in situations that don't concern them, and either save the day or make a fool out of themselves. If advocates love one thing, it's standing up for what's right. They advocate for the right thing, hence came the name advocates. This is something they're widely respected for, and they often gain the trust and admiration of people who work under them. They want to create a world where everyone does the right thing, and that's why concepts like equality and karma mean a great deal to them. They're not afraid to use their strengths to ensure that happens, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. They can get into literal fights for someone they don't even know just because they want to do the right thing. This is why INFJ is considered to be the best type to govern the people. Sometimes people forget that government is all about serving the people, not ruling them, and INFJs make sure everyone is reminded of that. Advocates will always stand up for the guy who catcalls a lady, and not to impress anyone, but because of a sincere sense of indignation. They stand up to a superior or a teacher or a parent if they ask them to do something that's not right. They may see helping others as their primary purpose in life, they hate injustice, and they care more about altruism than personal gain. Number 8. INFJs are afraid of the normal. Kinophobia, also known as fear of the average. Advocates are motivated by the sense of having a greater purpose in life. Their dream is creating solutions that change people's lives. They want to have a real impact. This is their main motivation that spurs them on to achieving great things for humanity. However, it can sometimes backfire. They can often find themselves thinking that what they're doing is not enough and feeling like they're meant for something bigger, and this can sometimes make people think they're weird or unrealistic. INFJs might get extremely frustrated if their life gets tedious, or if they can't see how what they're doing on a daily basis will contribute to their big visions. They can sometimes be blind to the fact that they can't change the world in one day, you need thousands of days of consistent work before you can really make a difference. This is why you need to support an INFJ in achieving their goals and reminding of the bigger picture and that they're taking small steps every day towards their end goal. Number 9. Be yourself. Avoid being pretentious at all costs. 
Advocates have the extroverted feeling property, which means they're hyper aware of other people's feelings. They're highly empathetic and idealistic, and they're conscious of the fact that everyone has their own life and story. So it's really easy for them to spot it when someone isn't being sincere and trying to deviate from their true selves. Also, this clashes with the INFJ's particular disapproval of lying. So as soon as they recognize someone is being pretentious, they're immediately put off by them. Number 10. Don't ask personal questions too early. Advocates are hard to open up. They're not exactly open books. They're reserved and prefer to stay quiet most of the time in order to preserve their principles from any external scrutiny and avoid being judged for their different preferences. They're also annoyed when someone asks them, why are you so quiet? This can make it frustrating to get close to an advocate. Even though they're empathetic and sensitive, they can deliberately conceal emotions in order to avoid a connection. So it requires extra effort in order to be in a relationship with an INFJ, but it'll probably be worth the effort. Number 11. Never interrupt an INFJ. Advocates crave focus in every aspect of their lives. They hate multitasking, and they love exploring a topic or an idea in depth. Getting interrupted while talking, working, or even thinking is extremely annoying to them because they tend to have a lot of complex connections in their thoughts at any given point. And a quick interruption like a text message or someone calling for them can break all these connections. Respect their time and working hours, and they will give you their undivided attention on their free time. Thanks for watching.